Hi everyone, this is Genevieve. This is Genevieve's reading and it has been a while. Why has it been so long? What have I been up to? Well, um, I'll be completely honest with you. I have been reading a lot and I've been so freaking busy that I just didn't have time to make videos. I made a couple that I just didn't really, I don't know, I just didn't feel good about them so I didn't do anything with them. But um, I'm updating you now after a, I'm just going to fill you in on everything I've been doing because it's really been a journey. <laughs> so this is going to be a little bit of a personal vlog, but also um, a reading vlog. Don't worry, we are definitely going to talk about books. And in particular, I'm going to point out a couple things that I've read over the past year that I really liked. Um, but I... I can't really go into everything because I've discovered something over the time uh, that I have not been posting. I am reading so much and so quickly that I just don't have time to update about every single book that I read. I wanted to, uh, you know, the beginning of this, review every book that I read this year, but at this point I've read like 117 or something, between 115 and 117, and I just, not all of them honestly deserve a big long rundown. So, and some of them do, and I just don't have time to talk about it. So, um, I, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Hopefully that'll change in the future, but this is where we're at right now. So for the month of June, um, and honestly the month of May as well, I've, uh, been really busy with my personal life as well as with my work life, um, including going to a conference and preparing to go to that conference because I wound up uh, selling things at that conference. I am an independent illustrator and I make tarot decks. And uh, so if you are interested in seeing what that's about, you can go to killerpancakeillustration.com. Uh, I'll put a link along here for you to check out. Uh, but yeah, so I was really excited about that. And uh, I was also preparing for a trip to Maine um, that was sort of a makeup from uh, my parents visiting six years ago and my dad getting really, really sick and having to be hospitalized. So I honestly just had like a lot of anxiety about making sure that trip went really well, which it did and everything was great. Although I wound up getting really sick on the trip. So um, right about that time, uh, I couldn't really focus on a book, um, and I've only finished one since then. So um, that gives me time to update you about everything that I read before then. <laughs> um, I went to the conference, that went really well, but I tested positive for COVID, and so now I'm just isolating, and you can probably hear that I'm not doing super great, <laughs> but um, I'm not doing super poorly either, so... Um, it's, it's been, like I said, it's been a really wild ride. <laughs> um, but I mostly am reading when I'm working uh, because when I'm drawing, it's, um, really helpful for me to listen to a book. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I, that's how I would get through like a book a day easily. You know, I just have start one in the morning and then have it done by lunch. Because if you listen to something at like two and a half speed, um, it only takes a few hours. So that's basically how I've been consuming a lot of media. Um, so that's what I've been up to personally. Um, and it's all been going, things have been going really, really well, even with getting sick and then getting sick again. Um, things are still going really well. Uh, but I will say that uh, I, I want to talk about some of the books that I've read and I want to share some of the weird things that I've been getting up to. I don't know if I've updated you about some of these. So if I've already talked about these, I apologize, but I had something to say about it twice. That's how good it was. Um, I read A Secret History uh, in May and uh, it's absolutely one of my favorite books that I've read this year so far. I feel like a extreme latecomer to reading that book. I mean, it came out in the 90s, uh, but uh, even in the resurgence that I think it's having in the past few years, I have just always had it on my TBR and never got to it. And I've been prioritizing those books as books that have just sort of been on my TBR for a while that I really think I'll like. Um, because in the past I was kind of prioritizing new stuff that I wouldn't know if I liked it or not. And I was really into that FOMO kind of thing. But lately I've been like, I'm just sick of having FOMO, I guess. I'm just over it. So instead I was like, no, I really want to like get into these books that I think I'm going to love. And I, I've been rewarded with amazing books that I love. So it's like, duh, I don't know. That sounds really, really obvious, but it just goes to show how my psyche works where I'm like, well, no, what if I want something that I can't have yet, or I didn't even know I wanted it. I want to like, 
I, yeah, I don't get it either, but anyway. Um, then I also read, uh, It by Stephen King, which I had obviously never read before. Uh, I, that's not true. I started it. I read the first like 400 pages of it like a while ago, years ago. And while I liked it for whatever reason, I just wasn't drawn in at the time. And I kind of, I, I was probably just intimidated by the length of it and just kind of gave up on it. And I went back to it. And on the second go round, it was incredible. I could not put it down. I didn't want to stop reading it, which is weird. Um, it definitely has a lot of issues. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, just King is definitely a liberal author, but he, there's just some things that he just really doesn't, um, it's like unconscious, un like, uh, underlying bias, you know, that he doesn't completely understand, or at least didn't when he was writing this. That being said, um, man, it was just, I don't even know how to describe it. Like probably because it, to me, what it really is about is the cycle of trauma and how no matter uh, what we do, if we don't confront the things that truly scare us, we're always going to be trapped by them. Um, and to me, it felt like he was really working out cycles of violence in his own life and um, trying to understand and cope with the fear that one has in childhood that plagues us into our adulthood. Um, and how, even though the adults in that book became free of it, they still had to go back and really like, um, I don't know, acknowledge what had happened to them, acknowledge like the role that dairy played in their lives and really like, uh, release themselves from that. I have just, I don't know. I don't even know if he intended for all of that to be in there or if he did, but he worked out some demons in that book and, I was there for it. I was super there for it. All right, let's see. Oh, I read uh, a book called Hench, which was absolutely incredible. It's about uh, superheroes, but in sort of a real world scenario and the impact that uh, being a superhero could really have on the world. Um, yeah, that book really, really surprised me. I could Another one that I really couldn't put down. Uh, and would highly recommend. It's not, it, it definitely has this like contemporary voice to it. And it has a really cool message, but it also is just kind of fun and kick-ass to read. So like if you're looking for something that has heart, but isn't like super, um, I don't know, it didn't feel like it really beat me over the head with a lot of its the points that it was trying to make. Um, Hench is by Natalie Zena Walshots. It's W-A-L-C-H-O-T-S. So uh, really, really enjoyed that. And it was on script. A lot of these were on script, actually. Um, let's see. I also just kind of going through, I read a lot of like thrillery kind of things that were fine one note sort of things. I've been reading through the, um, Bridgerton series. I, I, well, I shouldn't say that. I read two of the Bridgerton series, uh, with a group from, uh, Zach's, uh, Zach and Casey's channel, uh, Books and Bops. And I get that everybody there is loving it and I'm not, not loving it. I, well, I'm not as obsessed with it, I feel like, as everybody else. I think it's fine. I think Bridgerton is fine. Um, but it's just not, like, the best thing I've read, if that makes sense. Like, it's not, I don't know, it's not grabbing me to the point where I'm like, oh, I really need to spend lots of time with these characters. I I think it's fine. I think it's totally fine. It's like a lovely little palate cleanser in between better books. Um, uh, but I read The Duke and I and The Vice Count Who Loves Me, uh, or Who Loved Me, um, what is this? A pale light in the dark. I don't even remember what that was about. Oh, right. That was the Neo Geo book. I'm thinking of his Neo Geo book. Not as that. That was by KB, uh, Wagers. Um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. That was like a sci-fi kind of fun thing. Obviously the title doesn't leave a huge impression. Um, this one was fascinating. I don't know if people are going to love this book or if it's going to go over the way that I kind of wish it would, but I read this book called The Potrero Complex, uh, which is a dystopian sci-fi novel that takes place in the wake of a, um, uh, like a p major pandemic and it wiped out t like way more than, uh, the impact that COVID had. And, uh, it takes place, this woman, she's a reporter and she is working at this small, uh, newspaper in, uh, a suburb of Baltimore, uh, and suburb of Baltimore, DC. And she stumbles upon something 
basically she's trying to figure out how this newspaper has been able to support itself for so long. And then she discovers that there is a reason why. Um, and I won't get into that reason. Um, and it follows her, it follows her partner who is a software developer. Um, who's a really smart, interesting person. Uh, and it also follows, oh, let's see. Oh, a woman who is kidnapped, a young woman who's kidnapped. And, uh, it, I won't go into more of that. It, I don't know if this book is even out yet. I Let me look. Actually, I have my little spreadsheet here. And I wonder if... It comes out soon, though. It's like... Yeah, it comes out in August. It comes out August 2nd. Um, and it's by Amy Bernstein. Um, I could not put this book down when I read it. Um, I, I got the arc from NetGalley, so thank you, NetGalley. Um, I really could not pull away from this book. And um, the chapters are very short. Uh, the narrative is very propulsive. There's clearly things that are happening in this town that aren't right. Um, and this couple, the reporter and the software developer, they think that they're getting away from sort of this dystopian society within the city. And then they realize that they've gone out into the suburb and not everything is as it seems. It's not as simple of a life as they thought. Um, and it kind of goes into the impact, the greater societal impact of this, uh, the end of this pandemic, um, and sort of the, the small, uh, tyrants that arise, um, kind of finding, uh, you know, purchase in a world that's unstable essentially. And yeah, if you like dystopian, uh, mysteries, then you're going to really, this is your shit, like go get this book. Um, but it's not a happy book. Um, so don't expect that. Um, don't expect it to be this like uplifting narrative. Um, yeah, I, I think that's the only like trigger warning that I have for this is that, uh, some, it explores really dark possibilities basically. And I, I don't know why I like dark shit when I don't, when I'm in like a weird place, I don't understand it, but here we are. Um, I also read, let's see, uh, A Magic Steeped in Poison, which really surprised me. Um, that one ended on a cliffhanger. Uh, that one is by Judy Lynn. Um, I didn't expect to like it. It's a YA fantasy with a tea-based magic system. Um, and I'll be honest, like a lot of the like details of the kind of magic system, they were interesting, but I didn't like need to really absorb them to understand the plot. Basically she's a part of this competition, uh, and she's tr essentially in this competition in order to, uh, win something that'll help her family. Like it's kind of a very basic YA plot in that regard. Um, but I don't know, I found the characters to be really endearing. And by the end of it, uh, it ends on a cliffhanger because it is part of a series. And I was like, well, shit, like now I kind of wish... I had the second one right now because I would like to just jump into it. <laughs> so that was A Magic Steeped in Poison uh, by Judy Lynn. And let's see, gosh, I have so many things on here. Um, I'm just going to bop through a couple of the highlights. Uh, Jade City by Fonda Lee. Absolutely excellent. Absolutely excellent writing. Way to fucking go, Fonda Lee. I was like really entrenched in this. It's very... Uh, uh, sort of a 19... I don't know when this takes place. It has to take place sometime, I don't know, like if it's around the thirties or if it's later than that, I really couldn't tell you to be honest. And I'm sure somebody's going to read and be like, girl, like it's clear that it takes place in today times or something. I don't know, but it's a urban fantasy, uh, that had kind of like a, um, organized crime element to it, but it didn't feel overly gross about that. If that makes sense. A lot of times I think organized crime is glorified to a point that I think is disgusting. And this did not do that. Um, and oof, I don't know, the magic system is based in Jade, which was really fascinating. So highly recommend that. Uh, then Hex, uh, by Thomas Old, um, Huvelt, Huvelt, uh, my Dutch is pretty shitty, so I don't know. Uh, incredible horror, incredible horror. The ending, oh my God, the ending was jaw dropping. Like I couldn't believe what I was reading towards the end. So highly, if you're a horror nut, um, get yourself this book. Although the interesting aspect of this that I realized is that, uh, so in the books and bops server, uh, we have a woman that is from, uh, the Netherlands and she, uh, talked about the book, uh, loved it. And it was interesting to me that, um, basically we discovered that like in translation, uh, into English, the narrative was moved to the United States. And I thought that was really, I would not have been able to have 
told, like noticed that unless somebody had told me. And what was even more fascinating is that it's localized. So like, not only is it like moved to the States, but it's injected, like the, the story behind the hex, the story behind the witch that's at the center of this plot, um, is localized to make sense to American readers and to American history. And none of that is in the Dutch original like book, which was really wild. Um, and so I grabbed a copy of the German, uh, cause I don't speak Dutch, but, um, I do speak German. And so I wanted to check out the, uh, German, uh, translation and see if, if it was translated from the Dutch or from the English. It's translated from the English and it takes place in the United States, which is wild to me. Like what? So I don't know. Decisions were made, but it's really fascinating. Um, all that being said, none of that should impact your actual reading of it because in English or any other language, it's a great book. As I discovered from the person who read it in the original language and people that have read the translation. So there you go. Uh, but yeah, that's Hex by Thomas Old uh, Huvelt. And let's see, I read, oh wow, I read Fantastic Land by Mike uh, Bakoven. Fantastic. Um, I actually listen to it uh, through like Audible exclusive. They have it like if you are just like an Audible person or whatever. But then I also bought the ebook because I kind of want to go back and pick up on other details of what happened inside of that park. Um, but another kind of, uh, not apocalyptic, but it feels, it feels pretty apocalyptic. It's like dystopian, I guess, in the wake of this huge hurricane that impacts a, a, a what do you call those? An amusement park. Um, and then let's see. Oh yeah, those books were fine. They were not amazing. Uh, oh, okay. All right. These are the last two that I want to talk about. First is, um, You've Lost a Lot of Blood by Eric LaRocca. Eric LaRocca is fucked up in the best way. <laughs> um, I could not put this down. I, so I was reading, um, I kissed Cher Wheeler and I could not, I just DNF'd it. And it, which is crazy because like, I really enjoy Casey McQuiston. I still bought, I kissed Cher Wheeler sight unseen. And then I was like, Oh, this is YA. That's not really a problem, but, oof. and then the main character just got really angsty in a way that I was like, I don't, want to read this at all. I don't want to read about you fighting with your mom and going to the Dairy Queen. I just don't want to read this. Um, and so I DNF that and I just happened to have You've Lost a Lot of Blood by Eric LaRocca. And I was on a plane and I was like, okay, I guess I'm going to start reading this. And it is the weirdest, most odd thing I have ever, ever, ever read in my life um, in the best way. So it's unhinged. Okay. So You've Lost a Lot of Blood starts with an editor's note that I'm assuming is fake. I'm assuming that Eric LaRocca wrote this editor's note. And basically it says that like the things you're about to read are pretty messed up and, but we've gotten permission from the victim's families to release this document about this serial killer. So I'm like, okay, cool. Wild shit. Um, and then it goes into the narrative uh, in a first person perspective of somebody who's clearly a serial murderer. And it is very graphic and it's very violent. So if you, if you can't handle that, like don't read this book cause it will haunt you. It's still haunting me. Like I'm still thinking about things that like, and because you see this person hurting people from their perspective and like, uh, and very unapologetically basically. And it's pretty messed up. So there's that. Then it goes into these other chapters that are a fictional book that the main character serial killer person has written and I, it is wild. Like, I guess that's like the, and that narrative is about a woman who goes to this mansion where this very, uh, infamous and, uh, very like, uh, secretive, uh, game developer is living and she's going to be doing some contract work for this developer. And that is where I will leave that because that was the craziest part of it. I mean, it just, it starts and you're like, okay, it's setting things up. Things are kind of strange. Um, and then it just sort of gets stranger and stranger and stranger. And then by the end of it, you're like, it's just unhinged. But like, I could not put it away. I could not put it away. But I will just say like trigger warnings for like, if you don't like body horror, if you don't like um, really graphic depictions of people being harmed, don't read this book. Um, do not. But if you 
are morbidly curious, definitely read this book <laughs> because it's like, what? Um, I don't know what this book means. I don't know what it stands for. I don't know why it exists, but I don't care. Like, I don't care. I just want to read more from Eric LaRocca because it's so twisted um, and really creepy and sits with you. And it, yeah, it was just, it was nuts. So check that out. It's called uh, You've Lost a Lot of Blood by Eric LaRocca. Then I read the last big thing that I'll share about is The Measure. Uh, by Nikki Ehrlich. Um, this one is uh, also kind of a dystopian fiction. Uh, it's The basic premise is that one day everybody in the world, no matter where they live, gets a box with their name on it and a string inside, and the length of the string determines how long you have to live. And basically the book, I will just say right up front, you will never find out why the strings exist at all. Like, so it, it's not, it's not a sci-fi in the sense that it's not there to explain like what, what this phenomena is about. It's not about that at all. Instead, it's about, um, how people cope with it. And that was the most fascinating part. It was like, how do governments cope with it? How do, uh, people within their own families cope with it? Do people look, do they not look, um, you know, that whole thing. So, uh, and I found it really poetic and really beautiful. And I read this after I found out about the Supreme Court decision, uh, which was not a surprise to me considering everything that's going on, but it was still, I mean, it still didn't feel very good. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and there was like a lot of acceptance that I felt by reading this book. And I'm not saying that we need to like accept what's happening right now in the sense that like, just let it happen. I think we should definitely like be organizing and fighting. And like, if you're not registered to vote, please register to vote, get involved in local politics, like for real. Uh, but it's more about like understanding, like, and reflecting on what we can change. Right. And like what we can change is like how we approach the challenges that are kind of set up in front of us. Right. And so, um, and in fact, like in this book, you know, there's people that, you know, they go through this grieving process of like dealing with the strings for all of the reasons. Right. Um, and then they do something about it, you know, like the, there are characters that really actually like decide to do something about it. And like, um, and it felt so good. I don't know. It just felt really inspiring. And there was this really cool quote, uh, that I picked up from the book, um, and I actually wrote it down in my sketchbook. I'm going to grab it. Oh, I have everything right here because I'm just sitting in bed drawing and like dealing with my life, I guess. Um, so I, this is a quote from E.B. White, who I do not know who that is. So I hope they're not a terrible person, but I'm assuming they're not. Um, I arise in the morning torn between the desire to save the world and the desire to savor the world. And that makes it hard to plan the day. And I don't know, I read like the, this book while I was on a plane and I just cried. I was like, this is amazing. Um, and yeah, I don't have, uh, control over the decisions around me that other people make. Like I do not have control over that at all in so many ways, shape or form. But what I do have control over is, um, using my own voice, right? Like, um, and advocating for the things that I think are right. Um, and body autonomy is one of the things I think that's very right. <laughs> uh, because, you know, women's reproductive rights, it doesn't just stop there, right? Like, you know, this affects trans people, this affects people of color, this affects everybody, right? Like, um, and, uh, it's not so much that like, this is the issue that finally has like, motivated me to do something. Um, you know, I've been doing things for a while, but it's more that it, it gets exhausting, right? Like I think the past several years have been really exhausting. Um, and I think we're all kind of, um, exhausted. We're tired. Um, you know, we've donated money, we've voted, we've, um, you know, tried to use our voices in productive ways. And like, but the reality is like this fight, like in this, in this life that we have, um, it doesn't just end, right? Like it, um, it's a slow burn <laughs> and it's like, what do I want the quality of that to be? You know? Um, so some days I have to take care of myself and then some days I have to do, you know, I have to make a step t in the right direction. Right. And that's, that's all I can do. You know, I'm just two feet in a heartbeat at the end of the day. Um, but that doesn't mean that like I have to sit in, fear. Right. And I think that that's what this book like made me think a lot about. Um, and why I loved it so much is that like, um, 
it's not saying that I can't be afraid, right? Like it's not saying that I can't have fear. Um, but it is saying that like acceptance is the answer to all of my problems today. And today is the day I have. Um, and then there is like little things that I can do to get through the day. Um, and little things I can do for other people to get them through the day. And so, um, I don't know that just, I found that really affirming and lovely and wonderful. And I hope that if you read this book, that you find it lovely. Um, the ending, um, I don't know, it just left me in a really interesting and good place. Um, yeah, I have a feeling this channel is going to tend more towards horror. I read everything and I will talk about everything that I want to talk about, but, um, I don't know. Lately I've been reading a lot of horror, so, uh, buckle up buttercup. Um, uh, if you have any questions or want suggestions, let me know. Um, and I'm hoping also to collab with some other horror friends uh, on different videos too moving forward. So we will see. And otherwise, this video is already way too long. So I'm going to go. And um, I hope you all are safe and happy and healthy. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.